Okay, now I'm going to uh, show you the little furnace that I made. Did a little bit of uh, melting of lead yesterday. This is my new little uh, lead pot that I bought. The stuff that I've been buying as much as I can. I lean on McMaster Car. McMaster Car has has so much of the stuff that I can utilize that uh, if I didn't have McMaster Car, and no, I'm not being paid to talk about them. If I hadn't been uh, had their online, you know, uh, catalog to rely on, I wouldn't be near as far along as I am right now. Okay bought that pot basically it's going to be my lead pot my zinc pot and my uh the pot for pouring babbitt if i ever do it low low melting temperature pot right there okay uh it's just scrap what i was melting was the uh plates inside of a battery backup that you know it had gone bad and i don't know there's a lot less a lot less there than i wanted you know when it comes to uh generating lead but what it did do is it did give me at least uh half as much again lead half this lead came from those plates which is uh, not bad. Anyway, and I basically all I did is just put it on this turkey cooker and, uh, you know, melted it down with that. Okay, so here's my little furnace. Now, the shell I got from McMaster and Carr. The tube or the pipe, solid pipe, same thing, got from McMaster and Carr. This is my lid. I'm going to have to modify this lid, I believe, because when I put the lid on there, even after I've got this going, uh, you know, I've got this inside making some heat. Well, it's not, uh, you know, there's too much back pressure for some reason when I have the lid on there. Like there's not enough vent, not enough hole for all of this to continue making uh, flame and when I hear it starting to get very you know very dull I pick it up and all of a sudden I've got a poof and we've got the places inside is uh, full of un unburnt fuel you know it's ne it was never a bad thing but at least I was paying attention enough to where it didn't get concentrated in there and blow the lid off I'm just going to have to make that lid, you know, a lot more vented. We'll try it out. Anyway, so, bought the, uh, bought the shell from McMaster Car. Bought the pipe from McMaster and Car. The insulation here, the refractory, got that from, uh, crime any, well, budget supply budget casting supply budget casting supply out in california um, now i got it uh, a couple three years ago and when the last time i was looking over budget casting supplies stuff they didn't have it listed anymore don't know if they still have it or not but i had one bag that i hadn't used and using a 12 inch uh casting you know those 12 inch forms you can put into the ground and pour cast or rather pour cement into them and make a post base well that's what i did so i put that in the middle down here filled in the gap with the uh refractory dry refractory and then filled in the remainder of the room with perlite i'd never used that before uh, but I did study up on it, and basically perlite is obsidian. 
you know, volcanic glass that had been uh, foamed up in some way. You know, obsidian, as if somebody had had injected a whole lot of uh, air into it, and that's what it looks like when it's all foamed up, okay? Uh, well, that melting temperature is well below the aluminum melting temperature, or rather well above, I should say, well above the temperature of uh, molten aluminum, uh, which is likely to be the only thing I, I melt at the house here, and uh, so I'm not worried about it. And when I was mixing it, I mixed it, of course, in my mixer over here. I put all the refractory cement in there. I put all of the perlite in there. Then I just added, let's say, a gallon, maybe even just a half a gallon of water in there. And the refractory cement and perlite, oh no, I, I, that's what I did. I went and uh, mixed it dry for three or four minutes so that all of the perlite that was in there would be fully uh, coated by the refractory and and it was there wasn't a bit of uh, white perlite anymore and then I just added water until this stuff flowed in the mixer like I don't know like uh, the stuff you would see flowing in a, a mudslide all right it wasn't water but it also was a lot thicker or rather a lot wetter than I would have done if I'd had regular uh, foundry refractory you know the kind of stuff we uh, made made uh, linings in the induction furnace you know it was considerably wetter than that but then again I was pouring it into that there wasn't any holes in it uh, except for that on the side and I had that well sealed and it solidified just great I put it I put it uh, through a sintering, you know, brought it up to better than a thousand degrees. Didn't see a, a single blister, not a single bulge anywhere. There was no, no uh, degradation of the surface at all. So this looks like it's going to be a pretty good little lining for me. And uh, what I, I well, as I may have already said, I am going to be using propane. And going to be using that torch unless it winds up not being good enough and then I might might uh, first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to have that putting gas inside the container and then I might uh, make a, uh, a tube to uh, inject LP air in there like extra you know uh, oxygen in there and see if that gives me more power but Needless to say, or beside all that, this here is my furnace. That is where the furnace gets put when it's done. And uh, this will be the end of the information on furnaces. If anybody has any questions about furnaces, I'll be glad to look them up if I don't already know them. Like I used to say in the Navy, uh, I may not know, know it, but I'll look it up for you. Okay, the end of the, of the uh, information, and to all of you who know what I mean, Liberty Call.